Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. Today is Wednesday. It is April 6, 2021, and it is Wednesday, which means it is Solidarity Wednesdays. Every Wednesday here at the Benjo- How many times am I going to say Wednesday this morning? Well, I want to bring to the screen right now Nomiki Kantz from Solidarity Wednesdays. Every single week at this time, we get a chance to sit down and talk about what's happening in the world, uh, not just internationally, but domestically. Nomiki, thank you so much for hanging out and waiting for me. I had technical difficulties on my own personal end this morning. That's why we're late. But good morning to you. Good morning. And I do need that reminder of the day of the week because uh, this is a chaotic world that we live in. So if you want to come in several times a day and tell me what day of the week it is, that would be great. Because I actually could use that myself. (laughs) (laughs) Have you ever had that where it's like Monday and you're like, is it Friday? Yeah, it's Friday. No, no, it's Monday. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you know, and. And then all the years I'm at the stage of the pandemic where now the years are starting to run together. Uh, So every now and then I need someone to what year it is. Um, But I want to begin um, and I lost a microphone really quickly. I want to begin, as we always do, with a moment in black history. So, hey, Google, what happened today in black history? On April 6th, 1927, Mildred Faye Jefferson was born in Pittsburgh, Texas. Mildred became the first woman to complete a surgical internship at Boston City Hospital, the first black woman to graduate Harvard Medical School, and the first woman doctor at Boston University Medical Center. In 1972, she earned her board certification in surgery, going on to become the first woman member of the Boston Surgical Society. Adapted from Black Heritage Day calendar by author, lecturer and civil rights activist Dr. Carl Mack, Dr. Carl Mack is not with us today. He is working on the next iteration of this calendar, which is the Black Women's Calendar, 366 days of Black women who have contributed to American history. Uh, But as always, we want to begin um, setting our show with Black history. Nomiki, some Black history that's happening right now, uh, world history, American history for sure. Um, Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson is headed for confirmation. Uh, This is according to the AP. Uh, Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson is expected to be confirmed as a first black woman Supreme Court justice after a bipartisan group of senators voted on Monday to advance her her nomination. After the Senate Judiciary Committee voted uh, 11 to 11, the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer called for a vote to break the deadlock. No, Miki, we covered this yesterday and I know you've been talking about it. The Republican Party, as it pertains to Ketanji Brown Jackson, uh, they've shown that they really have no ground to stand on opposing her, yet they opposed her anyway. What are your thoughts about that? I mean, they are pulling back the curtain like, you know, I'm not giving them an excuses, but they used to speak in like like gentlemen's code, whatever that thing is that they do that I'm not familiar with because I live in New York and that's we just don't play that game here. But they used to like do that thing. They're not anymore. Mm. I mean, the, the, the things that they say on the record nowadays, yes, knowing yes. that they're going to lose this vote is like, w- w- what's your game here? Like, if this is a I, I don't even understand what their their goals are. I don't know. They're just blatantly out there. Racist, yeah. sexist, showing all their cards. And for what? What? They're not going to mm. win this. Exactly. Exactly. They're putting themselves on the record. I think it's more important for them. This is the thing that I think is worth expounding on. Um, They have no shame. They have no regard for how the future will regard them. Mm -hmm. Um, And they are only Republicans are only concerned with the very present, like the immediate gratification of winning a political argument or even just grandstanding for their audience. Right. Because like you said, there's no win here for Republicans, yet they still didn't mind putting all of their their bigotry on display. And it's it just to juxtapose it to one more thing. When you think about Kavanaugh, when you think about Amy Coney Barrett in terms of their uh, Senate judiciary hearings, um, you really see the caliber of difference in the character as well as the intensity of the examination from the Republicans. What are your thoughts? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's such, that's an interesting point. You know, it, we live in this world now where obviously Republicans and, and, and Democrats, too, are operating from a 
how are we going to win the next election mindset? That's and right. the That's Senate right. is obviously a little bit more forward thinking. They, they have a little bit more time, but these institutions and the media world that we live in today, the the TikTok news cycle, the uh, Twitter just owning our lives, um, it's it's inhabit it's it's basically taken over our our way of being. And it used to be that these are the types of moments when when you're going when you're when you have a Supreme Court justice where you put all that stuff aside and you focus on the next generation, the next generation. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. not really happening right now. And, and exactly. I mean, Amy Coney Barrett is like a flashback to 1952. And right. and they know that, too. But they're trying to win the next election. I don't even think this is about, like, Republicans having the Supreme Court. I don't. E- I mean, maybe I'm wrong about this, and this is probably unpopular. But I don't even actually think it's about abortion with her. Mm. Or it was about abortion with her. I think mm. it's about elections. I really think Period. that they owe it to some donors. And, you know, but if you were to, like, go internally, how many Republicans, I mean, even Republicans voters, how many Republicans really vote on abortion? I don't think mm. in today's Republican Party it's the number that we think. I think Republicans are more like Elon Musk followers mm. than they are Amy Coney Barrett That's followers right. today. That's right. I could be wrong. No, I absolutely, I absolutely agree with what you're saying. While Republicans are really good at pretending as though they care about um, about children, as though they care about life, the actual. I mean, and they're they're really good at around election times, you know, peddling that idea. But the truth of the matter is, we know that they are not the party of life whatsoever. Uh, one little bit of uh, more of, of Black history, Black future history. Um, Kristen Smalls, you and I both have Hi. interviewed him and spoken with him several times, and we've been watching this Amazon labor union. Um, before we move on to the next story, I just wanted to get a chance to talk to you about it. What are your thoughts about the very first Amazon union being formed by someone we know and we've interviewed Christian Smalls. I mean, this is such a huge story. I, there's no way. I, I mean, it's such a big story that when we say it's a big story, we have to just keep saying, no, 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 this is a big story. This is a big story because mm-hmm. I think the left is so used to uh, losing and being beaten up by big corporations and big capital and, and seeing the money that Amazon put behind uh, behind not only fighting this union effort off, but really character assassinating Christian Smalls. I mean, he started off getting fired because he like was, he wanted to protect his life. And I mean, Mm. this is, this is such a classic story of unionization. This is a guy who during the pandemic was like, you're putting me at risk. I don't have, he didn't have protection for himself and his colleagues didn't have protection. And then through that, you know, it's unveiled that 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 they they are saying the most disgusting things in writing That's about right. him. That's right. And then, you know, of course, they fired him. And then he's you know, the, he through that he's organizing. Mean, this is such a beautiful story of what it means to be a labor organizer today. This yeah. isn't the Starbucks stories are amazing too, but there's a difference here. Starbucks was I think what was so shocking about Starbucks is that Starbucks puts himself out there as being like a more you know. I guess like a better social, they, they, they offer healthcare, they have a minimum wage that's higher, you know, mm. they're like, well, what's, what's wrong with us? And, and that's true. But the great thing about Starbucks is you have a lot of young people who are like, no, 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 we need more. We need more. But right. Amazon is like, it's like straight back to 1922. When you start to read about what they're doing to people, you're like, I'm sorry, what? What are we in the jungle here? What are you like? Right. I feel like we were reading about factories in the twenties when you read. So to see that Christian Smalls, who also decided to not go with establishment unions to start their own union, failed the right. first time, kept going even after Amazon hired you know the big guns and and uh, you know we're talking about the big guns. They hired a Democratic major Democratic consulting firm. Mm. Like Happy Hochul and Hillary Clinton has used and Chuck Schumer, all, you know, the major establishment has used and they couldn't get it done. So, mm. you know, I, right. I think it's amazing. I think it's a great model. I think, um, you know, I, I can't wait to see where, where Chris Smalls goes. Cause you know, I both know he's, he's a, 
he's also just dope. He's like a cool guy. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's a, he's a dope guy. And I'm looking forward to speaking with him again and solidarity with all the Amazon workers. You mentioned Starbucks. I want to go right to the Starbucks union uh, efforts. The CEO uh, Schultz is back. I haven't, you don't hear a lot from him, but he speaks out when it's something important to him. And, and we have a clip. This is what he's saying in a town hall meeting on Monday. Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz just told workers that Starbucks is, quote, being assaulted in many ways by the threat of unionization. Let's take a listen in to the Starbucks CEO. Now, here's where it gets a little sensitive because I've been coached a little bit, but I do want to talk about something pretty serious. We can't ignore what is happening in the country as it relates to companies throughout the country being assaulted in many ways by the threat of unionization. I'm not even going to set it up. No, Miki. <laughs> oh, poor companies. Mm. Poor CEOs. They're so, they're just going through such torture right now. Such a the hard time. The a mess. And oh my God, like the gas prices are so high that maybe you're going to have to pay a little bit more for their private jet to get to uh, Barbados. You know, yeah. um, climate change is really, have, are you kidding me? Come on now. Like this is. <laughs> <laughs> I, he really he's really looking for sympathy. Right. I know corporations are people, according to Mitt Romney and Citizens United. But are we really supposed to feel empathy for corporations that make billions of dollars and leave workers out to dry? And then the second thing, Nomiki, is the threat of unionization. That phrase right there should tell you everything you need to know about how CEOs, executives and corporations view labor. They view 100%. your organizing as a threat. I, you know, I posted something um, the other day on uh, Instagram and, and social media. I, you know, I ran for office a couple of, a few years ago and we had a, it was a special election in, and in New York, when you have a special election, a citywide special election, you have to come up with your own party name. It's a very weird system. And you know, I, I ran on three issues. Number one, raising the minimum wage to $30 an hour in New York. Number two, um, rent control, uh, taking on uh, major developers in New York who are getting massive subsidies for tax subsidies mm, um, right. and tax breaks to, to, to sell property. And then, you know, they're selling it off to oligarchs and, um, and free transportation. Okay. So those three things I thought were very instrumental into shifting the way New York New Yorkers would live. So I saw something, um, you know, people said $30 an hour. Are you crazy? All these small businesses are going to go out of business. And I said, well, you know, it's, it's, we, we put in protections for small businesses in our plan, but I can't believe the people who are in my comments being like, you're going to ruin businesses in America. If you, what are you going to do? They're going to crash. If you raise the, the wages. And I said, hang on a second. Did you see the second part here about taxing the real estate developers and about rent control, because the reason why your coffee, my coffee, I have a coffee shop in my building, in a story. I don't even live in like Manhattan. My coffee that I'm drinking this morning, guess how much this iced coffee was? I don't want to ask seven dollars at least. Good job. Seven dollars and sixty cents. Seven dollars and sixty cents for an iced coffee. And so people say, you know, it's because you're because of the wages. No, 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 no. It is because of the rent. So. You know, this is by design. They want to blame the workers. They've permeated people's brains into thinking that when you pay fair wages, something that That's has not it. been, you know, when the last time they raised wages was in this country. I mean, if you're never going to raise wages, we're not going to be able to afford to pay the seven dollars and 50 cents coffee. It's mm. because of the rent. What are, who are we kidding? And the fact that they can still, I mean, he talks about unions like it's this new concept that showed up, you know, like aliens showed up <laughs> last night. And it's like people in America, even though they've been under attack, they know what unions are. That's right. It's us. That's right. 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 I think I think he's been living in such a fantasy world that the CEOs of America and the oligarchs of the world get to live in that he forgets that there are normal people who do not like <laughs> Extremely wealthy corporations that put their workers at risk. There are so many people who work in these organizations and the elite are so disconnected that he actually thought that what he mm -hmm. said was going to be OK. 
Right. Mm. But it's very clear if ever there was a time to unionize every and this was at a, a partners. They, they like to call us baristas their partners. Ask them uh, how much of the profit you're getting every quarter if you're really a partner. But I digress. This was at a partners meeting which should tell every single barista that has ever worked or will work for Starbucks that they need to unionize immediately. So we're going to keep our eye on the story as, um, as, as it develops. And, and with all the unionizing efforts, I want to go to two more stories, Nomiki, uh, while I still have you. Oklahoma has passed a total ban on abortions. Oklahoma passes a total abortion law, total ban law, limiting options for Texans. Here's a clip from KHOU 11 uh, breaking it down for us. And more breaking news that could have a big impact on Texas women. The state legislature in Oklahoma passing a law today that makes performing an abortion in that state a felony. It would be punishable by up to 10 years in prison. The Oklahoma governor is expected to sign the bill into law and it would go into effect this summer. Once in place, the law would have major regional impacts. More Texans have gone to Oklahoma to get abortions since the new Texas law went into effect last September. The law here bans abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. Planned Parenthood's abortion clinic in Oklahoma says it was seeing an 800 percent increase in the number of women from Texas. You know, wow. uh, Nomiki, I want you to 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 do what you do here. But I feel like this is obviously setting this up to be sent to the Supreme Court. There's so many of these instances of laws that are clearly at, on the face of it, unconstitutional based on Roe versus Wade. So they're trying to find some way to overturn that precedent. Uh, but I want you to take it. Um, what are your thoughts about this? No, that was my that was my immediate thought was they're just ready to like take them all all the way up so that they can just you know, snip away at a woman's right to choose a woman's autonomy. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's telling that they're, they, they said in that local news report, and let's not forget most local news in this country is, has a right wing spin. Um, mm -hmm. So the fact that they were willing to say, you know, this is, this is in reaction to uh, yes. so many more visits because of Texas just says a lot right there. I, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't want to just, you know, step away from the, the, the horror of this bill. But I do kind of want to uh, uh, remind folks that the Democratic Party, if we if, if we actually existed in many parts of this country, if the Democratic Party actually invested in, in the party the way that we did maybe 10, 15 years ago um, and before when we actually held the House in, in the 80s, like people say this country is so conservative. Well, you know, we, we held the House for about 30 years until we stopped mm. investing in in, in right. parties. So, you know, if, if, if we actually put money, all that money that you're giving, you know, donors are giving uh, to the DNC, if we actually put them into parties, maybe we could win some of these legislatures back so we didn't have these bills. I mean, I'm going to leave it there because I, people say, like, what's happened to this country is becoming more conservative. No, it's not. We just decided to not show up and play ball. <laughs> and, and when you don't show up and play ball, this is what they do. This is what they do. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this is... Um... And not to, I like the show Handmaid's Tale, but I also don't like it because it felt, you know, by season four, it felt so, or three rather, right. it felt so contrived to me. But now I'm like, if that show wasn't the most prescient show of this century, I mean, because it really feels like the Republican Party, it has no qualms, there's no hesitation, no reservation at all about overturning anything and everything they can to usher in that kind of society. What do you think? I know we got to get out of here. But no, you're right. I mean, I, it's they want to eliminate. You're right. There's no other way of saying it. It's I think. I've been thinking a lot about this lately. Steve Bannon, we talk about this all the time. Steve Bannon spends a lot of time on like the mythology and of, of, of manhood and like how to permeate the mindset of voters so that they vote for a conservative agenda. Um, you know, how to get certain folks to continue for generations to vote conservatively. And part of that is preventing certain people to be in office because the second you start to, those people make decisions, um, if they, they're more comfortable, the next generation is not, it's not, it's not foreign for them, um, to think about laws from the perspective of a Kanji Brown Jackson or, mm. um, or a Hillary Clinton even, you know? So I think, I think we have to start thinking that way too. It's not just about one bill here, one bill there, one bill there. They're thinking like, how do we make it so that men don't, 
see women in power mm. and what do they mm. get with that? So mm. I'll leave it there. Well, Nikki, <laughs> I'm coming to hang out with you later on. Tell everyone how they yes. can catch you and us later. Uh, check us out uh, tonight, 8 p.m. live on Twitch and YouTube at the Nomi Key Show. Just put it in there, N O M I K I uh, Show, and and Ben's going to be joining us. We're going to have, and we were supposed to do this last week, but I I, I got sick. Um, great panel of women who are running for office, Black women running for office. It's going to be exceptional. Go check it out. You can see who to support. Speaking of women in power, that's where you're going to go. <laughs> Absolutely, Nomiki Const of the Nomiki Show. Thank you so much. It is always a pleasure to have you on Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. <laughs> Solidarity Wednesdays. We'll see you next time. I love that. Thanks. More of the Benjamin Dixon Morning Show coming up after this. DJ exclusive. It's in your hands. Can y'all hear me okay? Because it sounds so low on my head. Good morning, y'all. Better. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mama and Daddy. I see y'all in the church. Good morning, y'all. All all I need is more. All I need is all I need is more. More. All I need is all I need is all I need is more. All I need is all I need. That's it. Good morning, the vibe in the cup house. Good morning. Shade Dragon. Cat, Cat Gibbons, good morning. Hi, ah, Bruce H. Brother Latif, what's going on? Alicia. Good morning, the Big Peace. Good morning. India Brown, good morning. Yeah, David, I just saw I dropped my music song. <laughs> Jason Marsh, good morning to you. Tiger, good morning. Sticks and stones. Shout out Six Dragon Daddy. What's going on, sir? Good morning to you. But your words can't hurt me. No, you just can't hurt me. No, I ain't been right. More than I've been wrong. And it still can't hurt me. Melanie no, Dennis, good morning. Me, no. Ooh, ooh, ooh. no, you just can't hurt me. No, you just can't hurt me. No, no, no. I know it's hard to be polite, and it's easy being petty. My mama used to tell me, God, I use you when you're ready. Man, it's crazy how my brother said. Anna Loom, good morning to you, Anna. You know, great, that's what everybody tell me. Man, life ain't a beach, it's a female dog. I'm staying ten toes down, though I still might fall. Oh, yeah, now I done came through, knocking pictures off you wild. Loving people who persecute you, yeah. they still it's still a tough life. I'm a path and a limp under my feet. I know my faith's strong, but my flesh still kind of weak. When that victory be looking like the verge of defeat. And I feel that disrespect, tell me turn my other cheek and say stick. And stones may break my bone, but your words can't hurt me. No, you just can't hurt me. No, I ain't been right more than I've been wrong. KFC, what's going on, sir? No, it just can't hurt me. Cross Banana, good morning. No, you just can't hurt me. No, you just can't hurt me. No, no, no. Be polite, it's easy being petty. Right. Mama used to tell me, Gotta use you when you're ready. Cause I ain't working on my Infinite content. Good morning to you, Anna Lou. Alicia, hey, Alicia. Hey, Let's keep it real, really good to see you too. Oh, you yeah. So be a light up on my path and a lamp under my feet. I know my faith strong, but my flesh still kind of weak. Right. When that victory be looking like the verge of defeat, and I feel that disrespect, help me turn my other cheek and say sticks and stones may break my bones. 
But your words can't hurt me No, you just can't hurt me No, I ain't been right More than I've been wrong And you still can't hurt me No, it just can't hurt me No No, you just can't hurt me no, you just can't hurt me So, no, the way no. I asked my wife If I was the only one she'd been with She said, yes All the others have been nines and tens Ain't that messed up? Damn <laughs> Alright, so y'all know what time it is <laughs> It's time for Big Headed Ben to get back on the screen because he ain't let me go get my coffee. He is holding me. I need help. Somebody help me, please. Ben is a terrible boss. <laughs> All right, y'all. It is time for On the Clock with Georgia Ford. Good morning, everybody. Dwayne, roll that intro. Welcome back to the Benjamin Dixon Morning Show. We're on the clock. Georgia Fort will be joining us momentarily. DJ Exclusive, please let me release you so you can go take care of all your, your morning festivities that you have to. I can't stand you, man. Um, Steve, oh man, I'm glad you're feeling better, man. Glad to have you back this morning. How you doing? I'm good, man. And it, I think my wisdom tooth is coming in. I'm just like, damn, first I hurt my neck. Now my wisdom tooth want to come in. You know what? I rebuke Ooh. it in the name of Jesus. But... Man, Everybody say you. that y'all go to hell. You're never too old. I mean, My sister got the gas too. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna comment about that, Dwayne, but I was gonna say wisdom teeth are like <laughs> like getting them pulled out is uh one of the one of the things I will never forget. They had to saw my tooth in half, my wisdom tooth in half, in order to get it out. So uh um I'm praying Thanks, for you, man. bro. <laughs> Thanks. Now I'm just gonna let I'm sure it's not. I'm hurt. sure you I'm, I'm, I'm just, sure you I'm won't have to get yours removed. Up. I'm sure you're not going to have to get yours removed, man. Like, yeah. did you have that pain, like, right here behind your ear is, like, get, going down to your neck? Yeah. Mine was so bad. Listen, this Ugh. was back at the time. This is because, you know, healthcare is hard to have in this country. You know, this before I had health care. It was so bad. I was punching myself in the face to make it go away, to make it feel better. Um, and then I went and, uh, <laughs> and and got all the work done that I needed to get done. But, uh, yeah, I, nah, wisdom teeth and toothaches. <laughs> anybody in the comment section who knows anything about it. They already know what you're going through, man. So I uh, hope you feel better. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you. With your grown ass wisdom teeth. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's pretty Georgia. Like, well, I don't know why they like it, but somebody like it. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning to Georgia Fort. DJ exclusive. Go get your coffee, man. Get off. Good morning, to Georgia. You do not want to hear my wisdom tooth story. Whew. Oh Lord. That, oh that God. Was, that was bad. That was Is bad. it was it worse I, than I them? They literally had a saw mine and happened. Like it was, it was, oh my goodness. Thank God for Percocet that week. Cause that was that was a real painful experience. What was yours? You quick? know. Listen, I, I broke my foot when I was in high school playing basketball okay. and they tried to give me Percocet and, you know, all those different painkillers and I refused to take mm. them. But now mm. when they pulled my wisdom teeth, that was a whole nother yes. story. I, I yes. was coming back Come for refills. <laughs> yes. I was I w- out of it. <laughs> I went back for a refill. Over here, just like... <sighs> No, but we're not trying to scare you. We're just letting you know that, uh, you know, there's there's medications and procedures to make sure that. But you have some time if they're just coming in. It'll be a couple of years before they actually hurt you. Um, yeah, but but they, yes, Georgia, I went to back you. to refill. I went back to refill my Percocet after my wisdom tooth experience. And the doctor was like, well, I could refill it for you the second time. But I'm pretty sure you'll be addicted to opiates after that. So I was like, OK, uh, yep. I just had to take the, the last three weeks of pain. I had to take by myself. It, it really hurt for a whole six six weeks after that surgery so um james y'all are not <laughs> <you> feel good <laughs> mm, hallelujah jesus <laughs> georgia how you doing james go get your coffee man we'll see you in a few minutes right. man. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that bro uh, I am, i'm not trying to see you james well. you oh, there's so much well there is um, there is so much happening around yeah. the country, um, and one of the best things about our 
partnership here is that you um, it's an unfortunate benefit, but you are centered in an area of the country where so much is happening all of the time. Um, just tell us what's going on now. What's happening in that side of the, of the world? I know that there's been teacher strikes. I know that there's been protests. What is going on in the world of Minneapolis and Minnesota and that region um, right now? Well, you know, the weird thing, Ben, is it has been oddly calm, uh, which is good. And I think that this community truly needs that because of all of the things that have happened over the last two years. Folks are ramping up for the one year anniversary of Dante Wright in order to honor him and celebrate his family. There's uh, quite a few events that are planned for this weekend. But outside of that, we've been following a story. There was a lot of community response to uh, the request by an indigenous woman that were denied. Uh, an indigenous woman who is currently incarcerated was seeking medical attention and her request for medical attention has been denied. And so there was a lot of rallying that was happening uh, around this woman. Her name is Shakoya Brasswood. And unfortunately, I think there's a portion of the population that can only focus on why she's in jail and mm. cannot then in turn humanize her and see why she deserves to have adequate medical attention. She right. currently has a bullet lodged in her spine and she needs to have it surgically removed. However, her request uh, for that surgery to happen have been declined. She actually had it scheduled, uh, but wow. she was detained before the surgery and was a was asking if she could be released specifically for the surgery. And even those requests were declined. I want you guys to take a listen to this video. Um, Nadia Sharawi, who I work with a lot, actually had the chance to um, drive their family lives like three or four hours away from us. So she drove to meet with Shakoya's sister. This is an interview with her sister and also a phone call from Shakoya uh, while she's behind bars. Take a listen. This call is from an inmate at a correctional facility and may be recorded or monitored. The, the call panicked. I think he panicked when he saw my gun and um, kind of just went off and he tripped while he was shooting at me. So I'm guessing he would have finished his rounds if he didn't trip. Um, Schneid Bassett, um, or tribal member. I'm 22 years old. Boy is my sister, my little sister, by like two years. We went on a high-speed chase, and Chikoya was in the back seat with two other of her friends, and they started racing around, but then the cops started, like, bumping into the back of their car to try to get them to stop, or, like, bumping into their bumper to get them to stop, and they just kept ramming into them. The cop lost them for a little bit and then found them again, and then... They ended up in NATO wash going around a turn, and that's the cop ended up putting the car into the ditch. Told us to get out of the car, put our hands on the car, and I had a Glock in my armpit, and I looked at it clip in my other armpit, and it was really big, so he said, put your hands on the car, and I, it was going to fall out with my, so I grabbed it out and um, put the clip in, but he heard that. He turned around and saw he had a gun and just started shooting me. And then he tripped. Um, the seventh shot and fell backwards. They shot at me seven times. I guarantee he would have shot more. He didn't trip. 30 minutes after the ambulance got there, and brought her, to, or brought her to the hospital here in Manoman, then life led her to Fargo. I had a call at like 2 in the morning, and I couldn't believe it, so I was like, what? I still have this um, bullet in my back. I don't know when I'm going to get it out. They don't have a, a nurse here that's full-time. The nurse that shows up is part-time, and she comes in when she can. All right, well, I'll talk to you later. Text me. All right. Love you. Yeah, I'm trying to fundraise for my sister. We need money for a lawyer and her medical bills. I'm trying to raise at least 20000 
for all of us in her situation. I have hope that we'll get, and faith that we'll raise the money for her, and that she gets justice. And so the odd thing, too, is Shakoya was moved to another jail facility without even her family's understanding, knowing uh, they, they weren't alerted to this. And so now right. she's even further away. Uh, mm. But, you know, when I shared this story, there was a lot of um, people in the comment section, you know, arguing whether Shakoya is innocent or not. And, right. you know, she she had court yesterday. She's going through the legal proceedings. She, you know, is hoping to get legal representation to fight whatever charges she has. That that is a whole separate issue. Right. Mm. That's a that's a mm. whole separate conversation. The the issue we are trying to point out is that you have a woman who needs a critical surgery who had it scheduled and the jail refused to allow her to attend her surgery, which could cost her her life. And wow. uh, when we look at situations like Hardell Sherrell, who died in jail, when you look mm -hmm. at Kelsey Rayner, right. who died in jail, uh, there is a critical issue here. Just because you are charged or convicted, if you're incarcerated, right. does not mean you're not a human being who does not That's deserve right adequate medical attention that that is the issue here that people need to see that you have a woman a 20 year old woman who has requested medical attention and her requests have been denied that's wow. a problem that's a serious problem, Georgia, uh, especially for those of us who understand what this carceral state actually is the only the only thing inmates have traditionally been provided with on, on a reasonable basis is health care. Like, it's it's sad, but some people get better health care in prisons than they do outside of the out of prisons, right? And so for them to refuse this from her, to me, has to be rooted in the fact that this involved a police shooting. This is just my opinion. This is just my take, because I don't know of many other circumstances, unless you're black. You already listed a couple where they intentionally do these things to black people. But I'm looking at this situation. I'm like, it's a surgery. And if she dies as a result of not having this surgery, there's even more culpability. So why would they put themselves in this harm way? And it's because the cruelty is the point. When 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 you have, especially when you have an encounter with the police, <laughs> The cruelty is the point. Absolutely. Well, we will continue to follow the story. Ben, uh, there was a uh, huge community response when people learned about Shakoya's story mm. and a push, a demand at that jail for there to be some type of uh, medical attention given to her. So we'll continue to follow it. Yeah. Hopefully she gets the medical attention she deserves. But, you know, when you are arrested, number one, it doesn't mean that you're guilty. You That's know, right. and and even if you are guilty, it doesn't mean you're not human. That's right. If you're incarcerated, and, mm. it, the, it is the state's responsibility to provide any adequate medical attention you may need while you're incarcerated. That is their responsibility. That is That's the right. oath that they take when they say that they're going to protect and serve. That's right. And what we see continuously is a pattern that once folks are are in that system, they don't they don't care. They they turn a blind eye. They uh, right. intentionally deny people the medical attention that they need. And and, and it's right. it's sad. It's and and on top of it, these institutions, these systems, some of them are private, make billions of dollars from taxpayer dollars. And what they're doing with it in this case, they're they're not allowing this individual to get their surgery. I, I just one last thing, Georgia, before we go to the next story, you know, the powerful can get away with whatever they can get us to excuse away on their behalf. And when you mentioned this story at the beginning, you were talking about how people in the comment section were like, oh, well, she's in jail. Oh, she did this. And this was why she was there. And that became a justification for her cruel and unusual punishment now that she is in jail. And I just want to remind folks, the more the powerful can get you to say, oh, well, I don't have to worry about that because they did this. They did that. 
that brings us one step closer to all of our rights being infringed upon a, a threat to justice anywhere Absolutely. is a ju threat to justice everywhere. Yeah. And to double down on that thought, Ben, if you if there are circumstances that allow you to not see a person's humanity, mm, does that right. say more about the system or does that say more about you as an Ooh. individual? And so I think yeah. people need to like really think about that as they are looking at stories like this and they're so quick to say, oh, well, that person deserved it. Right. You know, we're, right. we're not talking about a serial killer. We're not talking about a person who has caused harm to children. We're talking about a 20 year old woman. And yeah. so when you talk about people who, you know, commit crimes, um, even even the way that they tried to vilify George Floyd, you know, mm, or I right. mentioned Dante Wright, they try to vilify him, criminalize them. Right. Yep. And so um, if you have done something that is wrong, we've created a system that we have put our faith in as a society to be the place where people can go and course correct. Right. That's right. So let people go do their time, but do not strip them of their humanity in the process. Mm. That's it. And, and that's, that's the it. part for me where it's like the criminalization and the de dehumanization of, of individuals who are in trouble or who have made a bad choice. That's the part for me where it gets it gets tough, you know, yeah. uh, and, and I, I yeah. it's hard for me to respect people who criminalize, especially people of color. They're quick to That's do right. that. They're quick to dehumanize us um, right. and and say that, oh, well, you deserve this. And no, that's yeah. it's inhumane. That's right. It's inhumane. Absolutely. Georgia, I um, well, I hate to trip down on that, but <sighs> OK, let, let, let me move on, because that that what you're talking about right there strikes at the core of so many stories, whether we're talking about Russia's invasion or Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine, all the way down to this story. It is a statement of if we can turn a blind eye to someone else's suffering, what does that say about us? Uh, it might say that we work for Fox News. Um, <laughs> talk about a segue. Wow. Um, according to Fox News, a study shows that Fox viewers, they change their mind after 30 days of detox after 30 days of not being of watching Fox News and instead watching something like CNN, um, their opinions about critical issues have changed. I want to read this um, from CNN. Fox News viewers who were paid to watch CNN for 30 days eventually became more skeptical and less likely to buy into fake news, according to a new study. The study titled The Manifold Effects of Partisan Media on Viewers, Beliefs and Attitudes. Um, of 763 participants, when uh, they were randomized 40% into a uh, treatment group to change the slant of their media diet, they offered treatment to participants $15 an hour to watch seven hours of CNN per week. During sep uh, September of 2020, prioritizing the hours which participants indicated they typically watch Fox News. Here's the good part, the, the in interesting part. Despite regular Fox viewers being largely strong partisans, the study found that the changing of their mind, media diets on their factual beliefs, attitudes, perceptions, and issues of importance and overall political views change. This is according to the authors wow. of the study. So as soon, 30 days, 30 days after unplugging from Fox News, and in this case, plugging into CNN, their views about critical issues, including COVID-19 um, and the, the war in Russia, uh, rather the war in Ukraine, those issues started to change. Wow. Wow. Why, why am I not surprised? You know, there uh, we talk often here on this show um, and just even in conversations that we have behind the scenes about the power of media, the influence of media, how much media is responsible for the conditions of our nation mm -hmm. right now. And some people put a lot of stock in that and they agree. And others, you know, they they think that we are where we are for other reasons. But media is a, a central um, figure of our society. It, it has played a central role in conditioning the minds of Americans. And uh, Fox News specifically, I've talked a lot about their branding and their positioning and how mm -hmm. uh, at some point 
it even seems like the uh, FCC should be able to step in and say, you are, this is false advertisement. That's right. You're not news. You're, this is entertainment. There's, there's been a lot of, um, you know, clarity behind the scenes with their company that they're, they're entertainment, not news. So why is it not called Fox entertainment? Then we don't, we don't have TMZ going around claiming to be news because it's entertainment gossip. That's right. You know, so, so why, why, you know, has, has the, the uh, checks and balances, which is the FCC in this case, allowed them to position themselves in a way and manipulate a huge portion of the population to believe their rhetoric, to believe their lies, to believe their hatred. And now we're seeing that manifest in January 6th. We're seeing it manifest at school board meetings when you have all these people who are, you know, um, protesting CRT being implemented in their schools. We're seeing the manifestation of their ideologies and their rhetoric in our Mm -hmm. real lives. That's so right. when will, will there be an intervention? If you have studies like this that, that can now prove it and it's not hmm. just a claim by people like me who are accused of being on what the left or being a, a Democrat or all of the things that someone who watches Fox News would say about people like us to try to defend their positioning. Now we have research. We have a study that shows how manipulative Fox News is. Right. Right. I don't want to make a minor correction here. I said the uh, include the war in Ukraine. It did not include the war in Ukraine. But what it did include was uh, questions on covid and Donald Trump um, on covid. And this is, again, from the reporting on covid viewers who switch were six percentage points more likely to believe other countries handle the virus better than the U.S. Five points more likely to believe that people suffer from what known as long COVID and I'm sorry that people simply suffer from long COVID and then an 11 points less likely to say a president should focus on containing violent protests than the pandemic. One last point that changed. These are all their opinions that changed after just 30 days of not being uh, watching Fox News. Um, they found large effect of watching CNN instead of Fox News on participants' factual perceptions of current events, meaning their beliefs of current events and knowledge about the 2020 presidential uh, candidates' positions. The researchers said they discovered changes in attitudes about Donald Trump and Republicans, as well as large effects on their opinions about COVID. So, yes, Georgia, in fact, every person who is watching Fox News is watching an entertainment network that is telling them that they are viewing factual, fair and balanced information. And as soon as they are unplugged from that machine, they start going back to some sense of normalcy. Yeah. And and think about what that does also to like somebody's political beliefs when you have a whole network that is backing an individual, regardless of whether or not they're qualified or have the country's best interest at mind. Uh, But uh, oftentimes, likely they're just spending money with that network. Right. And so you start to get into this really a scary place where you have, it's almost, it feels hypnotic. It it feels in some ways when you think about what Fox news is doing, it's hypnotizing people. It's pulling people in into uh, this, this fake world and manipulating people, deceiving them. Um, And, and we've seen folks actually take action based on the belief system and the values that are perpetuated on that network. So if we have fact-based evidence and research that shows what this network is doing and the harm it's causing, what are we going to do about it? What is the FCC right. going to do about it? At, at what mm. point is there an intervention? Um, and it, it brings me back to also like just the the basics of integrity and honesty as as you know moral principles that we value in our society. And mm. while maybe it's not illegal to lie on TV, while maybe it doesn't specifically violate a you know, policy of the FCC, if we don't ethically as a society figure out a way to put some roadblocks in place, I mean, even locally, you know, 
there was 1,300 ethics complaints filed against the mayor in Minneapolis Mm. for lying about the Amir Locke case, right? And the Mm. mishandling of that. But those ethics complaints were dismissed. And so to me, it's like, even when we have the evidence that there has been wrongdoing, there has been lies, dishonesty, we don't have a Mm -mm. system that has the integrity to intervene and course correct. So we're allowing for dishonest leadership to lead our cities, our states, our countries. That's really dangerous. I mean, honesty and, and, you know, being truthful is like the bare minimum requirement for good leadership. Hmm. And so we've Hmm. opened ourselves up as a nation by not having checks and balances in place to root out uh, bad actors. That's right. And not only can we not root out bad actors, Georgia, it seems like the more bad of an actor you are willing to be in this country, the further you can go. Donald Trump, for example, like there's just a list of people who not only fail up, but their integrity is lacking. But that seems to be their pathway to success. So uh, Fox News is certainly one of those. And you're right. This our entire society is really hanging on the precipice, ready to fall over into the abyss because of an entertainment network that has more views than all the other news networks damn near combined. Um, And that's why I think we're in the situation, so many of the situations that we're in. Georgia, listen, I always appreciate spending the time with you. Um, Thank you so much for the reporting that you do. Um, Tell everyone, I know know you're here all the time, but before we go, I just want you to tell everyone specifically, how can they continue to support your efforts? Because the only way we're going to actually beat back against these propaganda machines like Fox News is if we have independent media like Georgia Port. Please tell the people how they can support your media company. Absolutely. Well, people can support by waking up every day with the Benjamin Dixon show, continuing to do that as support. Uh, And then if you want to follow my work, you can head over to my website, georgiafort.com. All of my social media links are there. Share the work, watch the work, comment, engage with it, um, and tell a friend to follow along as well. Yeah, absolutely. Georgia Fort, we're going to go to a break. When we come back, like it or not, it's getting ready to go down. The Benjamin Dixon Morning Show will be back right after this. I'm in line with the stars. I'm in sync with the earth. Ten toes deep, flower child from the turf. I never switch sides. Like, even when I die, I'm a ride. All right, so y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. We got more coming up next on the Benjamin Dixon Morning Show. You don't want to miss it. Like it or not, it's going down. Coming up next. Stay tuned. Good morning, everybody. I'm never so packed for the stack. Never lied on the back, got a bag from the way that I write it. Queen looking Tyson, do that I survived through an 80 to the house. Then I hit it to the sky, change haters on a tirade. Talking to the grip in the face, be still, let that hate stuff fade. We all with the same, we all want a meal in the safe. I want to live like I'm trying to delight me. Trail spill from my lips, feel big from the bit. Take a sip till I pass out. I'm trying to get grip, but it don't make sense. Cause you can lose life on this fast route. Yeah, turn thoughts to a cash cow. That was so terrible. I thought of me because it was horrible. Oh, my God. That's what the slap in myself on the map. Nights really <laughs> Y'all stay tuned. <laughs> when I write it, give a piece of myself to the page. I don't do it for the praise, love. That's just how I'm made. Truth in the glass in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Do it at me, old man. Trying to pass in the fear. You're the first one to talk, but the last one to hear. Eyes blurry, but I couldn't see that. It's any clear down. Start to feel like I'm on one. Start to land, I'll be here for the long run. I'm a slave for the cash. Got snakes in the grass. No All right, real quick, y'all. Let's go ahead and get our new Twitch subscribers and patron members. Red off here. So here we go. As we get some more light it up, lighten up. Here I'm talking, ain't right enough, tighten up. Everything that I Bailey Live, good to see you as well. Good morning to you. Bang on the set list, going past up when I came for the breakfast. Put me in your prayers, I might put you on the Ill hustle, good morning, ill hustle. Young, reckless, gold in my soul, got the same on my necklace. internet got me looking like I'm in some kind of uh, stop motion animation or something. (laughs) (laughs) All right, 
like y'all know what time it is. Like it or not. It's about to go down. Yeah. Uh, y'all know what time it is. Good morning, y'all. Get your coffee and tea. Well, I sound like I was so stuffy when I recorded it. You know what it's time for like it or not, y'all. 9 a.m. to 10.30, yeah Like it or not is on your channel, yeah Politics and culture, it's we change scan like we supposed to, yeah Interviews and all the news, we get to choose what gets the views Like it or not, with Queen of Zoom, it's starting now, so stick around Like it or not, it's going Morning to your country boy, good morning Priscilla, good morning to you Like it or not, y'all still Elizabeth Lanza, good morning. It's coming through. <laughs> you Malia, good morning to you, Malia. Good story for you. Everybody ain't tell y'all the weirdest summer job. I can't even say it right. The weirdest summer job I have ever had was cleaning the monkey cages at the this local zoo. Man, that shit was bananas. Being in the politics, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Latino, good morning to you. I stay dropping them jams. Like it or not, it's going down. Like it or not, y'all stick around. Oh, like it or not, it's dark. Why is a stack elevator better than a bad relationship? It's never gonna let you down. Like it or not, with Benjamin Dixon starts now. Good morning, good morning, good morning, people. Good morning, and welcome to Like It or Not, where we are free to tell the truth. <laughs> not care who doesn't like it. <laughs> what you laughing at this time? What's going on? Yo, big head ass. ass. <laughs> <laughs> it is Wednesday, April 6, 2022. Welcome to the morning show. Rebecca Azor will be joining us momentarily. We are here with DJ exclusives on the one and twos. What does that even mean? The one and two mixers? Is that what that means? One and twos? Yeah, I always you know, say it, but I never really just sit down, turn- down and ones and twos on the mixers. Turntables. Yeah, turntables labeled that one makes- and two. I mean, these days it's just like um, it's. A and B because they're not really turntables, they're like decks, right. I guess. So right. it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was wondering, like, what do, what do the ones and twos mean in 2022 when a lot of people aren't using uh, uh, d- uh, turntables anymore? But I guess that, you're right, they're decks. They're like digital yeah. decks that y'all use. Yeah, digital, exactly. I mean, it still means about the same thing, but yeah, this, I'm just glad I was never in that era where I had to carry around this big ass two turntables, crates. these <laughs> crates, crates, bro. Oh my God. Crates. I, crates. I saw one dude, like, I was at one point, I had my hands in doing serving and, and catering stuff. And I remember I was doing an event, and the guy pulled up that was DJing for the wedding. And he had CDs. When I tell you, this man had a whole damn dolly of CDs, bro. I'm just like, dude, that's like 500 CDs. You carry these around with you? No, nah, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think for aesthetic value, if I was a DJ, I'd carry around like maybe a, a Marvin Gaye record, you know, actual LP record, like actual wax. And, you know, some uh-huh. stuff, you know, stuff that like stands out, Al Green, you know what I mean? Some stuff like that. But everything else, James, I'm putting on a digital deck. I'm not, I'm not carrying around 500. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, good morning to you. Rebecca Zor will be joining us. I want to, I want to jump into a story that we started yesterday and it is about um, Elon Musk. Elon Musk is, has bought, uh, I believe a share of what, 7% of 9% of Twitter. And, Yesterday, when we talked about it, we hadn't got the second part of the news, which is now that uh, he must his own director, which means that he's far more powerful than just a shareholder, because there are thousands of shareholders in Twitter. Um, he is now sitting on the board. And now here's the thing. Um, the people... Uh, 
before I say anything, James, what do you what do you think about um, billionaires just being able to buy these major communication channels like Twitter and then like I mean Facebook for all I mean so much of our media is just one hundred percent social media technology internet it's actually all of it everything that we use in this world is completely controlled by billionaires to the point where now they don't like something on a platform they just go and drop a few billion and buy it. Yeah. I mean, if you want to control the narrative, that's what they do. Now, granted, I wonder how much uh, control of the stuff that he has. Let me rephrase that. I wonder how much control he has in order to like, change algorithms or take mm-hmm. stuff down, if that makes any sense. So I, I realize yeah. and I see now that all of a sudden Twitter has added a an edit button to the tweets. I mean, I guess I'm not on Twitter that much. I thought I was, but I'm just like, there's never been an edit button before. Oh wow! Okay, well, I'm going to check right never now. I've that. never seen. No, there's. I've never there's, seen an edit button. No edit I know button. that's one of the things. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to say, well, that's one of the things he's teasing, right? Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think he feels like, oh, if he brings us a, a an edit button, that we'll ignore all the other things, like you mentioned, um, James, uh, David. Were you about to say something? Yeah, he he put he, his poll was asking like what people would want, um, and then all of a sudden there's also like some Twitter product people that uh that that tweeted like Like. that they're interested in knowing what what maybe their team should work on so it's Hmm. interesting but um there's uh, in 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 pulling details about the story the ceo is definitely uh, keeping an eye on uh, elon's twitter feed and you know now they're now that they have him on the board they're 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 definitely aware and uh they did this strategically so there's no doubt that with um uh, dorsey's um exit they did this to mm-hmm. get you know a new direction and obviously they think musk is a good fit because uh, it actually i think it came out this morning he's been buying stocks since i think they said january mm. um oh, wow. and, and and so he just refiled with the sec informing them that he's not inactive it's not a passive buy he is now he should now be considered active that was that that was a development this morning mm. so abc is reporting that, in the chat too that he's on the board of directors now is that yeah is that yeah right yeah, yeah. No, that's that's yeah. Wow. that's the that's the part so that's after, the power oh, I thought, right I thought, there. and i thought you meant you mentioned that already so yeah they did well ben go ahead they, they, yeah they, i was going to give that, you uh, that actually caps him ABC is reporting that Elon Musk will join Twitter's board of directors. Uh, the news comes just one day after the world's richest man and purchases, according to AD, purchased 10% stake in the social media platform. On April 4th, Musk, uh, Musk purchased 73.5 million shares in Twitter, estimated to be worth about $3 billion. On April 5th, uh, Twitter Inc. said in a regulatory filing that Musk term on the board will expire at the company's 2024 annual shareholding holders meeting, which means he has a whole two years to do whatever he wants to on the board of directors. Um, again, uh, according to the agreement, Musk won't be able to purchase more than 14.9% of Twitter's outstanding stock while serving while serving on the board or for 90 days after. So if he just waits a whole quarter, he can go and buy what he wants to of Twitter. One last mm. thing. Twitter CEO Parag Argawal uh, shared his support for Musk joining the social media company's board, saying, quote, he's both a passionate believer and an intense critic of the service, which is exactly what we need at Twitter. Um, Hmm. No, you don't. So so you basically do not need all, the, uh, ja- all my porn about to go away, basically. That's what they're saying. <laughs> no, I think, you know, you, well, it depends. Just send us to space, it, bro. <laughs> it depends, man. I, I think you're, you're, the porn might be okay. But then again, Elon Musk is tied into that, that global reactionary movement of Christian fascists who want to do away with porn mm-hmm. and everywhere on the face of the planet. So you might be right, James. That is his cabal. Mm-hmm. That's the group he's, <laughs> he's working with. Um, he's also, you know, big buddies with uh, Kanye West. And, you know, he's big buddies with people in the fascist movement on the right. I, I just don't know. Help me understand this. So many people don't see Elon Musk as the villain that he clearly is, people. I mean, like, I get PR, but the, the, the stuff that Elon Musk actively does is just terrible. And what he's fighting for 
It's horrible. He tried to institute a coup. He tried to overthrow the government he wanted. Let me rephrase that. He wanted and tweeted that we should overthrow the Bolivian government so he could get the batteries for his Tesla cars. Folks, Elon Musk is not a good person, but that's just the opinion of my own, James. So basically, he's like, he's literally Lex Luthor. He's literally Lex Luthor. With hair plugs. Lex Luthor with hair plugs and like 10% of the intelligence of Lex Luthor. But yes, that's exactly, that's exactly what he is. And because it's, it's, it's this thing, a lot, a lot of people, when you are the richest man in the world, you are clearly going to have billions of people who adore you, support you because you know why? Not because you're a good person or someone we should look up to. It's because everyone wants to be rich. Nobody wants to be poor. So Elon Musk has this weird fan base that literally doesn't see any of the evil shit that, excuse me, I'm on the morning show, even the stuff that he does. All they see is that, oh, he's, you know, he bought Tesla and now he's pretending like he owns Tesla. So anyway, I don't want to I don't want to turn this into a, 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 you know, shit posting about Elon Musk. But I think it's really <laughs> dangerous when you when you consider that Twitter is one of the last few places in the media space, in the Internet space where you literally can scale up based on what you say versus the algorithm. And you asked the right question, James, if he's allowed to get in there and tweak anything about the algorithm. Right. Hmm. That's way too much power for one man to have. Yep, black uh, black Twitter is going down the drain. And Marjorie said it best. Said, Good morning, Mar as well too. Bezos is Luthor. Uh, Elon mm. Musk will probably be Solomon Grundy. <laughs> Bezos is Lex <laughs> like Luthor. Yeah. <laughs> Without the charisma, take away the charisma, because Bezos is an right. uncharismatic Borg. Um, anyway. Um, I want a couple other stories here. I want to jump since I mentioned Kanye. Uh, this is a story I meant to do. We went to do uh, yesterday. TMZ and Variety are reporting that Kanye or Ye, uh, uh, who was supposed to headline Coachella on April 17th and April 24th, will no longer perform. The rapper has not yet been uh, given a reason for canceling or given a reason for canceling. However, West previously said that he wouldn't play Coachella unless Billy English apologized to Travis Scott for what he felt was a diss. Uh, aimed at the Astro World tragedy. That's and now it's jogging my memory. I'm remembering why this beef was. Uh, a couple of more notes from this report. Uh, the comment Elish uh, made about one Eilish. of her shows was Eilish. <laughs> thank you. I thought it was English. <laughs> Billy English. No, Eilish. I thought. Oh, Eilish. Whatever. Yeah. That person. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Okay, so the con the the comment Eilish made at one of her show was, "I wait for people to be okay." until I keep going. Now, for people who don't remember what happened at the Astro World event, I think we need to pause and just make sure people have the right context. That's the event where, where several people were killed in the crowd. Uh, Travis Scott was performing. Uh, I think there was a, a several other artists, uh, big name artists that were there. And because of the push of the crowd to the front, um, Several people, including some children, were killed. And uh, so this is what Eilish was ta Billy was talking about here. And this is why Kanye is pulling out. Um, it's it's a lot of pettiness. But at the same time, it's like. Is anybody even talking about what happened at Astro World for real anymore? Because of course not. that was a tragedy because of huge proportions. You, you know, it's one of those things where it, it, it's 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 swept under the rug, you know, and. Travis Scott, of course, like we talked about before, he had, I'm not going to say he had his hand in it, but I don't know if he knew exactly what was going on at the moment everything was happening. Mm -hmm. But when he was, found yeah. out, the show should have stopped. Especially, of, of course, it did stop after everything started Eventually, going yeah. on and he realized. But it's one of those things to where these concert promoters and these people that run these venues like this, I'm sure that they swept all of this under the rug. But you're right. You haven't heard any news about this anymore since then and Kanye being well, uh dropping from Coachella he probably was banned from performing at Coachella <laughs> because he already was banned from performing at the Grammys mm. probably got banned from performing at Coachella as well too it's just yeah just just, just go away go, ahead. go take a break man go 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 take <laughs> yeah. a little vacation bro go on Astro World I believe there's a there is a like a multi billion dollar lawsuit against uh Scott and Drake if I'm not mistaken, I don't know where the lawsuit mm. stands, but I remember when that, when the lawsuit was launched, it wasn't just Scott. It was also uh, Drake because I think Drake, Drake was on stage uh, performing as well, I yeah. believe, right? 
Well, he, I, I think it's Drake's label, or he produced. I, I, I think it's Drake, Drake's label. He's affiliated with it. Mm. Well, I just responded just by. Sh- just go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Kanye some bail real quick. He, this isn't the first time that he's had something to say about the Billy Eilish mm-hmm. comments. Like he, he had been saying this before the right. whole Coachella thing. Um, right, right. When she first came out and said it, because like there was this ho- that whole feud back and forth when when Kanye was going at um, what's my man name, the comedian Pete. dude, this went with, with Kim, and then a Pete. lot of people was taking sides. So, so uh, yeah. This isn't. A- it's funny how the news all of a sudden. I don't know which one of y'all on this show. Somebody on our show said this. Uh, it's funny how immediately after Astro World, all of the news went to being about Kanye fighting with Kim and Pete Davidson. Um, but that's as far as into conspiracy theories as you're going to get me to go. TMZ is reporting that Ye was planning to bring Travis Scott with him to Coachella, which would have been his first major appearance since the Astro World tragedy. Eilish responded to uh, uh, Ye by taking to Instagram and saying, "Literally never said a thing about Travis. Was just helping a fan." <laughs> Which is which is true. She never said anything yeah. about Travis. This, she she didn't say his name, but everybody knew what she was saying. <laughs> she was talking it was about a subtweet. It. She was like I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw the stone and then go hide my hands. Like everybody knew what she was talking about. She was taking a shot, and then once the good backlash shot. came, then she was like, "No, nah, I ain't say nothing about him." That's but I think yeah. that's the appropriate shot to take, right? Like, like, yeah, no, like, hey, listen, also, let, not to rehash Astro World, but Travis Scott, uh, as much as my kids love him and as much as popular as he is, he's a dick. Did you guys see what he did to that young kid, that young videographer on stage? So I don't really have a lot of, like, you know, sympathy and empathy for, like, the, the, the interconnectedness of that world and people hating on each other and the spats back and forth. The fact of the matter is, is if you are on stage and you have an audience in front of you, even digitally, Jesus Christ, like, James, we, every single one of us on this show, we take care to make sure that we're responsible with our platform. So I don't think mm-hmm. Eilish, of course, she was subtweeting them. Of course, she was referencing him. So I'm not going to let her slide with that. But at the same time, I think it's the right thing to say. Yo, well, listen. But go ahead. So, so at the same time, I don't think it, it needed to be said at all because, yeah, she she maybe the sentiment was right, but it was insensitive to the people who lost their lives and the families, you know what I'm saying, of that whole tragedy there. So it, di- it didn't need to be – like, it was a little jab that could have stayed in the pocket. Like, it – I don't know. I, I, as, I, and, of course, well, you know, she, yeah. she's 17. She's a 17-year-old being a 17-year-old tweet. I'm sorry, she's, she's how old is she? Billy Eilish, she's a baby. 17? Billy See, I don't, I don't know anything yeah. about any, I don't know anything about Billy. I don't know anything about. I barely even know who Travis Scott is, and that's by choice. I, I intentionally <laughs> dropped out of hip hop in 2008, and I'm just now coming back with Drake's new release. This is the first time coming back to hip hop. That's by choice. I don't know any of these people, but I, I, I do know at 17 <laughs> years old, this is a grown 42 year old man who's who's extending his beef with a 17 year old. <laughs> Dwayne, I bet he know Megan Thee Stallion though. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta make a correction. I got back into hip hop when I first heard Megan The Stallion rapping, not when I saw her. <laughs> and shout out to Megan The Stallion too, who's gone makeup free now. And when I tell you, she is She's extremely beautiful with without makeup. Like, it. oh my gosh, the game. She's killing the game. <laughs> I just had to put that out there. I saw that this morning. I'm like, damn, Megan, you better make me shout out to my life choices. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm wait a minute. No, 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 no. Wait a minute, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what they say about wait? What they say about sunshine? It's a <laughs> sunshine. <Man. laughs> make a man. It's a mean woman to make a man change his religion. <laughs> That's a mean woman. Make a man change his sexuality, James. But uh, no, shout out to Megan Thee Stallion. Like, and I just want to emphasize that the reason I uh, am so enamored by her first is her rap skills. Like, I honestly, when she came out, I was like, oh, nah, she was a, she's a beast from day one with them lyrics. So, yeah. Um, and, but yes, Billy is 20 I do now. Know. I'm sorry. Billy is 20 now. Thank you, Tiger. Okay. <laughs> I'm about to say 17. Though. But, oh, but even God. still. Okay. I want to play a clip. I want to go back to politics for a minute so we can see what kind of uh, assholes we're dealing with in the real world. Mm. J.D. Vance is running for office. Now, he's a popular, I don't know what he is amongst conservatives, but he's pretty popular. And um, this... Well, this is where we are in the year of the Lord, 20 and 22. Here's J.D. Vance wanting to know, are you a racist? Do you hate Mexicans? Because if so, this is your guy. 
Mm. Are you a racist? Do you <laughs> hate Mexicans? The media calls us racist for wanting to build Trump's wall. They censor us, but it doesn't change the truth. Joe Biden's open border is killing Ohioans, with more illegal drugs and more Democrat voters pouring into this country. This issue is personal. I nearly lost my mother to the poison coming across our border. No child should grow up in order. <laughs> I'm J.D. Vance, and I approve this message because whatever they call us, we will put America first. And, um, <laughs> Actually, now that I see that he's from Ohio, I wonder if Morgan Harper, who we interviewed yesterday, is 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 is, is, right, is yeah. looking that, to. That's the scene. Yeah. They're running against each other. Yep. Go ahead, James. You was out like you were about to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Because it was like he was, his, his, he he almost lost his mother to the poison that was coming across through there. I don't think it was the people fault that bought it over there. You know what? Never mind. Just never no, mind. it's his mama's fault. <laughs> Let's just say it, right? He said it. <laughs> J.D. Vance, in his book, blamed his mama for her own <laughs> drug problems. And then he said, well, how can I one up my own shit? I don't I don't know if I'm going to make it through the rest of this episode without cussing. Um he wanted to know how could he one up his shittiness. And you know what he did? He said, I'm now going to no longer blame my mother. I am going to blame the e quote unquote illegals that are coming across the bringing drugs across the border. Um, these people have no soul. I honestly None. think that when they sit quietly in the comfort of their homes and it's really silent, you know how most of us can hear an inner monologue and we hear we, you know what I mean? We hear our consciousness telling us to be good people. These bastards have they are so human beings don't care about anything but political power and yes they will burn this country to the ground because this dude just sold out his mama on in, well, well he sold out his mama on uh in, in the book that was a new york times bestseller um but now he's going full racist saying are you a racist <laughs> are you do you hate mexicans so this is you know skipping him setting him aside for a second this is the pathway to victory for republicans and conservatives yes. Ever since Donald Trump got power. Absolutely, Ben. And my gosh, and it's funny that you brought this up because I was going to say, <laughs> and I meant to post some of these in our group, but looking at the ads here, David Kemp and David Perdue going against each other, <laughs> it's just like, it, it's hilarious seeing Republicans battle the way that they fight. And it's just like, oh, ooh, y'all yeah. Penny, and both of y'all are plugging Trump like he is was the big bad. Or something like yeah. oh my god yeah. like this is how y'all gonna win your election by plugging trump like this <laughs> and for trump to have talked about kemp the way that he did and for kemp and his commercial to be bigging up trump the way he is bro i'm just like uh, what is they're not WTF, short of cucks. Dude. <laughs> they're, they're not short of cucks on the on the right right they're not short mm. of like for for people who really buy into toxic masculinity mm. they don't have any spines over there like Ted Cruz, Donald Trump called Ted Cruz's wife ugly. You know what Ted Cruz did in response? He raised money for Donald Trump to win the presidency. I'm about to say he didn't do what Will Smith did for Jada. <laughs> Too soon? I'm sorry. <laughs> Not really. Perfect timing, actually. <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, you know, so that's Ted Cruz. Now you got J.D. Vance who threw his mother under the bus. You got like, like they have no, they have no problem. Oh, Mitt Romney. Remember when mm. Donald Trump trash Mitt Romney. What did Mitt Romney do? He went to dinner and endorsed Donald Trump, right? We look at all these people who bow their knee to Donald Trump, and yet at the same time, they're running around the country acting like they're the biggest, toughest men, and you guys really yes. bitch the hell up when it comes to Donald Trump. <laughs> Two points if I can. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just going to drop a couple hundred dollars in fines before most, the day is most over, Most times man. it is me, and today it is Ben, y'all. I have not said one cuss thread today. I have cussed more in this episode than I've cussed in the last in this year. I guarantee you I've cussed more in this episode. This There's a reason for that, James. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you <laughs> after the show um, when I go see a man. Uh, anyway, um, Biden administration to extend loan. Let me tell you something, man. Listen, listen. There's so much going on in this world. I do highly recommend everyone, whatever you do to keep your, your peace and your zen and your serenity and your center Continue to do it and always yes. be ready to uh, re-up. Uh, Biden administration Amen. to extend student <laughs> loan pause. This is good news for those of us who still have student loans, even in our 40s. Um, they are going to pause uh, the loan uh, calls again. This is the third pause, I believe, uh, due to the pandemic. I think it's just time for them to go ahead and cancel it because Navient... Hey. 
Mm. I'm not answering your call. I'm not. Thank you, Ben. And I was just about to say, y'all, they keep pushing back this date so many times, bro. It's been pushed back so much at this point. Just go ahead and cancel cancel it. it. As you see, it's not affecting this economy in any kind of way. Go ahead and cancel the damn loans, man. Go ahead and cancel it. In fact, I would argue yes. that it would help. Yep. It would help the economy tremendously. Yes. If you take all of the people who are paying, because I'm not paying y'all, but if you take all the people who are going to pay you Maybe. and then redirect that money into the economy, people could buy homes, people could buy cars, people could pay for their children's. And some people are trying to pay for their student loans at the same time they're trying to pay their student, their children's student loans. Here's the gag. Mm. The number one thing any nation can invest in to make that nation more profitable is education. Yet we're stuck with four point two trillion dollars in student debt. You know why? Because greedy vulture capitalists needed to find a new way to squeeze a penny out of poor people. And they decided to monetize education. Well, and think, so here we are. I think it might that's even, why it might pay. even be deeper than that, though, Ben, because if Go you look it. at it. So so like you said, if if the people that's paying the student loans had that money, they would either invest it, put it back into the economy, it would it would go towards, you know what I mean, future generations, things like that. But the reason that they don't want to do that is because you gotta have it's 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 separating the classes. Like you can't you can't mm. have the people in the lower class getting a leg up at all because then they're gonna start to catch up and then the people mm-hmm. at the top not gonna have as much power. So it's deeper than just, you know what I mean, like, yeah, of course they're greedy, but they're greedy and and they want to keep the people that's that's listen, low. man. I'm yeah. never gonna I'm never gonna be upset with somebody on the show one up in my leftism. Push it even harder. You're right. <laughs> it goes, it, it literally goes down to the fact that the number one way to keep people in poverty is to keep them separate from education, keep them from the, the why do you think they try to keep slaves enslaved people from reading? Right? It's very simple. The more you learn, the more you understand about the system. One last thing. This empire tells you everything about it. They love to brag on all the stuff they do. They're books by the hundreds about every aspect of this country, of this world. And if you actually read some of them, yeah, you you would not be the kind of citizen that just sits back and watch what happens. If you read what this country has done and read what this capitalism has done to the world, you do, uh, Dwayne, you become very active uh, as evidenced by this show. And you're right. They absolutely cannot allow that to happen on scale. They can't. Yeah. Mm. That's why that's yep. why trades and stuff are, are not being pushed to the forefront because you ain't gotta go get two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars worth of student loan debt to go get a trade that's gonna pay you a hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm. Right. Mm. Had I known the things th- uh, mm. <laughs> what I know now, man, <laughs> I, I yeah. wasted eighty thousand dollars. I wasted a car note, a damn car, almost the house. Going that's a to nice school car, for bro. a degree <laughs> I'm not even using. Bro, it kind of pisses me off. It's like I spent all this money and then the nail in the coffin y'all like and i and i'm and i and i appreciate bethune cookman university for hell giving wildcats. me the opportunity to come back to school at hell wildcats and do yeah. what i needed to do but for the simple fact that i was able to go back and finish for damn free y'all could have did that 10 years ago when i was still in school <laughs> i had to wait until i'm like grown as hell and then y'all say hey why don't you come on back we're gonna pay for your school and you can finish and get your degree Oh, okay. Better just give me this damn paper because I already paid for it like five times. <laughs> right. over. Just give me this goddamn paper. <laughs> Shout out to Bethune Cookman and every other university that's doing that to us. Yeah. Because every university hey, man, is just, doing that to us, man. Exactly. Gotta bro. love our and HBCUs. You know, I, but they right. do it too. Mm, mm-hmm. They really do. And I mean, and shout out to them as well, too, for uh, allowing or uh, starting those programs that, that are letting people come back, especially the HBCU programs, because I heard Morehouse has a program like that as well, too. So shout out to them for mm. doing that. But I mean, damn, can y'all cancel the student loan? Day? Well, see, see that. James, that's why when I left, remember when I left Cookman, I, I didn't finish at Cookman. I left Cookman in, in yeah. around 2000. Um, and then I went to a, a state school, but then I dropped out. I dropped out of college at least twice. And then I dropped out of grad school once because, well, I was I when I was too young at the beginning to really understand what I wanted to focus on. Right. I was just blowing money Um, when I came back and had to pay for it myself. That's when I actually performed well, when I was able to focus in and get what I needed. But no, man, I, I totally get it. Like there's so much of our youth that is wasted getting in debt to these universities 
when a lot of us at mm. those ages really probably need some real world experiences that don't involve don't student loan know. debt. Because you don't got no clue what you want to do. It's just it's just been ingrained yeah. that like after uh, high mm. school, I got to go to college. Now I'm in college racking up debt in classes, mm -hmm. taking classes that I probably ain't even going to use and probably change my mm. major two, three times. So, mm. yep. you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just about to ask everybody that's on this show, how many times did y'all change y'all major? <laughs> I just dropped Man, out. That's all. It's look, I ain't, even gonna, I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. And, and my mama upstairs, she can come tell me if, if I'm lying. I think I took the same. My freshman year of college, I took the same class as second semester that I took first semester. <laughs> Funny story. Uh, you remember, Mister? You remember Professor Douglas? You remember Professor yep. Douglas, the math, math instructor? I, so my major, my my majors when I went to Bethune Cookman, they were math, just pure math, and music. Um, I'm still piecing together how those two connect. Uh, but Professor Douglas, man, that professor was so strict. Uh, and I appreciate it. I'm not saying this is a negative thing, but I was able to basically skip class the entire semester and still come out of Calc 2. No, Calc 3. I came out of Calc 3 with a passing grade. Like it was like a B minus, right? Um, yes. But <laughs> Professor Douglas said, I don't care. Dixon, <laughs> you missed that many classes. You come. He made me come to summer school and take this class all over again. And I'm glad he did because right. I, I learned a whole lot more by actually attending right. um, versus what I remembered <laughs> from other courses. So shout out to Professor Douglas. Is he even still alive? I Anybody know? I'm not even sure. Look, and I remember that, Big, because that was that summer that we just were all over Daytona mm -hmm. doing everything. Bro, that was the <laughs> summer we got ran. <laughs> Bro, that was that the was summer, summer. <laughs> that we ran away from them white supremacists in Daytona. We had a high. That was exactly the summer, bro. <laughs> And, 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 and no, shout out to him because like, actually, honestly, honestly, that's the summer I learned to study. That's the summer I learned. I grabbed my book. Finally, I grabbed that big ass calculus book and I sat down and I realized I had to read the whole damn thing to actually, you know, to get all the nuances that he wanted. Um, I was the guy who could do it without showing my work. And he just wasn't right. having that. That's what I appreciated yeah. about HBCUs. But I think exactly. I still hold yeah, you're right, too. man. That was that was when I I learned to like focus because just like you, I think around that point, I went to school for uh, my original major was uh, I was going for forensic science, so I had to do forgot what my major had to be for forensic science, but it wasn't exactly forensic science. So everything was going good. I love my science classes, my biology classes. I got to microbiology and. Uh, Organic chemistry during band season at eight o'clock in the morning, both classes. After that, doing that for a year and a half, I was like, oh, yeah, after I failed and I had to go to the, the principal's office, the off dean's office, basically. And they told me, you are on <laughs> academic probation. I'm like, I am changing my major. Go ahead, yep. drop them grades, please, because this is not for me. <laughs> yep. Now, I want to finish the story. I got to finish the story out because uh there's some people who might remember how i left cookman i did end up losing my cosby scholarship i used to be a bill cosby mm. scholar and yep. I, there's a picture i might as well say it now there's a picture of me standing next to bill cosby as tall as he is and my short behind uh he came to cookman graduation in 99 i think you remember pudding. that uh no he gave me some quaaludes but anyway um <laughs> <laughs> he said it like i'm short and bald head let me stop Go ahead, man. <laughs> I don't know. He was into short bell men at the time. But anyway, I digress. Uh, <laughs> I lost that scholarship because, um, um, oh, differential equations. So that summer, James, the summer we hung out, I did really good in calculus. I even beat the one student in the class I couldn't beat, which uh, uh, which happened to be a Korean student. I can't remember. my. He was my roommate. I can't remember. Yao Ming. And, uh, yep, yep. I, yeah. 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 You remember Yao? Hold on, man. Up. That boy was so brilliant. Y'all was brilliant. not me, not y'all. I mean, there was another y'all, uh, but he was so brilliant. And that <laughs> summer was the only summer I actually we used to have competitions at the board who could finish the calculus problem first. And, you know, that summer I did the work and I was able to beat him. Come that fall, James was differential equations. I walked out of that classroom on the third day and realized I was it, it, I wasn't cut out. <laughs> that's when I said math is over for me. After Calc three, I said that's it. I'm not doing this anymore. And um, I don't know why I didn't drop the class. 
I don't know why. I don't know why, but I sure got an F in that class and uh, lost my Cosby scholarship because of that. But uh, See, man, and, anyway, and it's and good not really, to be affiliated. I, it's good not to be affiliated with Cosby all these years later. So that worked out for my good. <laughs> right, it worked out for you. And, and you're right, being like, why did we not drop these classes? We just stood there I should have just dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> why did I take it? Out? That's because I was and I, I was 19 and I was stupid. <laughs> I was yep. 19 and I was stupid because if my son does that when he turns 19 and I have to pay for a course, y'all going to call DCS on me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's get back to some news before, before I say somebody else's name wrong. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, one last story. Uh, oh, no, we are this one, but I do want to bring it up again. And um, actually, Let's do this. I want to take a pause. DJ Exclusive, can you give us a break real quick? I want to take a quick five-minute break. When we come back, we got a couple more stories that we're going to go over. We'll do a few minutes in the after party. And after that, we were going to get out of here. But more of the Benjamin Dixon Morning Show right after this brief break. I know the laughter and the pain. Will I ever love again? All right, y'all, stay tuned. We'll be more proud. We'll be right back with more like it or not. <laughs> Shout out to Lily. Good morning, Lily, and I feel you. Teresa, good morning. Made a promise to myself, and I repeat it in my head. Set your mind free. Such a and shout out to Bethune Cookman University, no man. At least they gave me the opportunity to meet some extremely cool ass people and be able to do a lot of stuff, man, that I wouldn't be able to do. Like, I was the catering chef uh, for a lot of events, but like the major one that stood out was being able to cook for the astronauts at NASA. It's really fun, really, really fun. Yes, I put my knives up and my pans up, and I said, I'm good with cooking. <laughs> Dawn goes by, and yet I wonder, why do we put each other through hell? Why can't we just get over ourselves? I know we should. You cast your spell and, and yes, my son hustle in uh, college was DJ. It wasn't until years after I started. I but yeah, I started again. DJing parties and DJing the Crucible's Take it anymore. a job interview today when the manager handed me a laptop and said hey I want you to try to sell this to me I said cool okay so I put it under my arm left the building and went home eventually he called me back and said bring my laptop back now I said uh two hundred dollars and it's yours <laughs> trying to god dang it Here's another one. <laughs> I bought a pair of shoes from a drug dealer. Yeah, I bought a pair of shoes from a drug dealer. I don't know what he laced on uh, them with, but they had me tripping all day. <laughs> Industrial Arts, what's going on? Good morning to you. Derek Fuller. Good morning, Sarah A.B. Amber Layla, good morning. Sonny Wright, what's going on? If 666 is all evil, then 25.8069758 is the root of all evil. You're welcome. My house 
estimates are convinced our house is haunted. I've lived here for 274 years and not noticed anything strange. All right, y'all, welcome back to the screen. Benjamin Parnell, Percy Parcival, Placebo. Placebo? <laughs> porn, uh, pornography, <laughs> pornography. Nah, Benjamin, nah, hey, Benjamin hey, Pornography hey. Dixon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, slow down on them, on them P words. You go too much further, you're going to sound like Republicans over here. <laughs> you got too, they, too many more P words. You can call me, James. You know, Benjamin everything's Percy a pedophile to the, <laughs> to the Republican Party. <laughs> Oh, I take hey, the push and pee. Push and pee. I thought you said push a T. Uh, uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> it was, man, listen, um, I love doing the show out here in the mornings. It starts off so cool. It starts off like in the 50 degrees, man. It feels great out here. It's damn near 100 degrees out here right now. I said, we got to take a break. I'm over here sweating. I'm trying to like. <laughs> I'm about to sweat, sir. <laughs> Bro, it was too- Listen, when I set up this morning, it was chilly. I'm like, oh, this is perfect, man. This weather hit 30 degrees increase in the last two hours. I said, forget that mess. Anyway. Speaking of pushing T, album yeah, coming soon. He just dropped a song mm. with Jay-Z last night. Yes, sir. What? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Drake? <laughs> yeah. Push and nah, they ended. They ended that beef, right? The Drake and Pusha T beef. Uh, that's over. I, I don't. Eh. Kinda. Kinda. Right. That man exposed a it's, whole child. <laughs> a whole child. Pusha T <laughs> rapped about a whole child that nobody knew about. And next thing you know, Drake is a good father. I swear to God, this has been. <laughs> <laughs> now he's a good dad. Like, damn. <laughs> he's a good daddy. He rapping about it. Daddy's home. Daddy's home. You know, he's rapping about missing I, all the I don't, I don't yeah. think that's about his son, Benjamin. <laughs> I know. I know. Daddy's, the beat, the oh, way okay. beat drop. <laughs> way the beat drop. But. You know, he uh, Drake is the master of double entendres because at the beginning he's saying it's about his sons. But when that beat drop, we know it's not about his sons. That's not the daddy right. he's talking about. But uh, his <laughs> son, singular, <laughs> singular, he only has one. Let me not put that out there. And then then the next thing you know, uh, Pusha T is coming. No, <laughs> anyway, um, what else? We got those clips. We got some great clips from the after party. We're going to play them now. Uh, Rebecca is out. She's going to be get back with us tomorrow. Shout out to her as she's doing everything that she's got to do. Uh, Dwayne, let me know which one. What, what, what we got ready? Or you want to just run one? Um, I can just run one. This one's a little long. Run this one. So let's take a look at it. All right, let's take a look at this first after party clip. All right, gang. Big Oscars night last week. <laughs> what are we, we going to talk about? I'm, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious what we should talk about. Coda winning Best Picture. It was so good and so well deserved. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's me time yeah, to charge. Yeah, that was a pretty big moment. Yes. But it was also uh, Ariana DeBose making Oscar history. I love that. I love that. It was a huge moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or we could talk about the thing that everybody is talking no. about. The thing no. that it, you saw what happened. We have to talk about something else. James, we have to at least no. acknowledge. We don't talk about Jada. No, no, no. <laughs> we don't talk about Jada. No, no, no. We don't talk about Jada. So, it was the Oscar show. It was the Oscar. Right in the beginning, and Beyonce crushed be alive. Oscar buzz in the behind. She walks in, showing <laughs> some major skin. Oh, so. There's nothing that could ever kill this vibe. Yeah, nothing could ever go wrong. There was a montage of spies. 007. Regina Cap, <laughs> Josh Brolin style. We were in heaven. <laughs> What's his Corden? What's his name? Uh, James Corbin. Yeah. Corbin, yeah. No, no, no. We don't talk about Jada. But we. That's enough. I'm sure we're going to get a copyright flag for that. It was worth it, though. It was worth it. Listen, here's the thing. Here's the thing that bothers me. Like, there's a, a headline yesterday. It's a headline, uh, according to sources close to Jada. I want to make sure I give you guys the context. According to sources close to Jada in a headline, she said that um, she really wished Will hadn't done that. Now, I really wish Will hadn't done that, but Will ain't my man. I just, if she really said that, I kind of really like, I feel it. I I didn't feel bad for Will at first, but like, dang, now you, you, anyway, 
I'll leave it alone. We don't talk about Jada. I don't need him to pull up uh, okay. where I am right now. We'll leave it. We'll leave it be. Uh, I'll figure that out off air. We got one more. Wife's name. I mean, out so I mean, out mouth. Yo, effing mouth. Next clip. <laughs> there it is. Snack Panther said okay, it. I like this. I like this. Snack Panther said Will made himself a goon for nothing. I mean, just think about what Jada's saying. Though. Not just even for saying, your wife, bro. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Right. Think about what, think about what Jada's saying there. I, I kind of wish you didn't do that. I kind of wish you didn't go on national uh, on an international stage and smack another celebrity on prime time. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, it's it's one of those things where she had to say it because I mean, yeah. You gotta condemn what he did. This is like, mm. yeah. If not, then it's just. But like, she doesn't. She that's I'm, her man. She ain't got to condemn nothing. That's her right. husband. And, but you know, she still can. I, I still feel the same way. I was like, damn. I would have been the same way. Like, uh, thank you for doing that. But I wish you hadn't did that. And I don't like. Camera. I say that privately for sure. I'd say that privately, yeah. but I certainly would not let that get out to to any sources. I'm gonna say that. that's pillow talk. That's pillow talk. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> And Being we got in this Rebecca. camera. See, we got Rebecca. <laughs> this camera does it. Yeah, after the second hour, right? Welcome. Well, Rebecca. listen, we're we're, 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 we're yeah. You. Rebecca Azor is here. I forgive the camera on my side, but Rebecca Azor, Queen Azor is in the house. How you doing, Queen? Good. Sorry, was on mute. Good. Is um, in the, are you on your computer microphone? <laughs> yeah, your mic is out too. But it's all good. Glad to see you this morning. There she is. We okay. don't talk How about now? About Rebecca, no. There it is. We don't <laughs> talk about Rebecca. You gotta say Becca, Becca. It, Becca, it, that's okay. It, thank you. I was looking at Becca. <laughs> we don't talk about Becca. <laughs> no, 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 no. How you I mean, doing? I see, I see good morning, having a good old boys club. Y'all didn't need me. Well, now, See, especially if you try to, you. especially nobody if you try to stay through the afternoon, because I was getting ready to go home. Nobody was talking right, to you, Dwayne. And then I heard David chiming in on Will and Jada. Yep. So, yeah, oh, Lord, here she, she goes. Came on. <laughs> she said, oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, Is that why you popped in? <laughs> We're going to end the show. In the street. Like, oh, uh, uh, let me get on. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't even really see the segment. I just got on. I just got on. I just got on. Just got on. What'd you say, David? You decided to come in with, with two and a half minutes on the clock. <laughs> to say that the white man should not be talking about Jaden. Gordon is right. Excuse me. I thought we talked about this. <laughs> No, but um, no, I didn't really hear exactly what you guys are talking about. Um, my camera don't like me like, today, folks. It looks like you guys have been having a really good time. I could have saved yeah. my face for, for the pillow. No, you can always say hello as we get ready to say goodbye. <laughs> yeah. And the people love to see you, Rebecca, like always. No, I really couldn't. Like, I, I didn't have to really put on any mascara. And I didn't even do heavy mascara. I could have really did a full eye. And I just. <laughs> <laughs> do you do the smoky eye? What's the smoke? I do. Is that the, I don't. I. Is that the I raccoon the look, right? Yeah, that's like when you put okay. it right underneath. And I naturally have big old eyeballs, so I can't really always do that down here because it makes me look crazy. Um, but I always do like a, a wing, and I don't have time to do a wing in the mornings for here because it needs to be precise. Like you got to make sure you're coming in with not cousins, but sisters at least. You know what I'm saying? Step sisters, whatever. <laughs> half sisters, I would say half sisters. You can't be coming in with cousins and step sisters oh. and stuff. Right. Yeah, I hear the Buddha boo back in the background. <laughs> I'm hearing a baby. Oh, yeah, Excuse she, me. She trying to chew on my finger. She got a tooth coming in. I don't know why. It's oh, too early she's for all that. Wow, my really? Oh, she's cutting yeah. teeth. Yeah. She's yeah. cutting wow. teeth. What? Chewing on every damn thing. Uh, I'm out again. Ooh, well, listen. Ooh, listen, let me tell you. The the, the camera is saying, go, listen. <laughs> as good as my setup has been for the last two years, you're going to come here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna buy us a refrigerator. Look, you know what? That, you know what? This is a great. This is a no great more. reason for us to raise some anymore? money. Go ahead, Rebecca. You, 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 you figured that you wasn't good. I figured that you wasn't coming because I saw what it takes. Nobody's talking to you, Dwayne. After you wasn't here when you said you was gonna be here, I was like, oh, she ain't coming. Ain't even got right. Then I just seen your name pop up on the thing. I was like, I seen your name pop up. I was like, why you guys? I'm not coming in the morning. It's 9:55. What are you doing? 
<sighs> okay, you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching Like It or Not. Um, <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash Like It or Not. Patreon.com forward slash Like It or Not. Thank you for tuning you can, in. With I, like, I don't know if Dwayne and the Dwayne and Davis want to stay. stay. In the Boys Club version of Like It or Not. I hope that you guys enjoyed that conversation about Will and Jada. So uh, it was really so brief. We thought about Will and Jada for 30 had a seconds. Very good conversation about education. Okay, y'all don't have to jump you know, on me. Did. Y'all don't have to jump did. on me. It was me. really good. <laughs> why you was not watching the show. You know what I mean? Why you was laying in your bed, not watching the show. I was not, not laying on the in the show. She was probably on the not hill on the rising. We was having a good time. Tomorrow. Good that's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that's hey, tomorrow. That is tomorrow, bitch. You know I love you. You know I love you. Thank you guys for tuning in to Like It or Not. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> she came in to say goodbye. We love y'all. Meet it. Bye. She came in. We'll see tomorrow. everybody tomorrow. <laughs> Next time. We love you, Rebecca. Dwayne. <laughs> Bye, guys. Love y'all. We'll see everybody in the morning. <laughs> Take care, everybody. I hate all, all, all of y'all are going y'all, to hell. And all of y'all. <laughs> and then Rebecca and her came out too. <laughs> My camera didn't go out today. It did if I was the first one. <laughs> Love y'all mean it. We will see y'all in the manana. Y'all gonna be great. Have an excellent day. And let's give y'all an affirmation for today. <clears throat> Here we go. I am resilient in the face of challenging times. I am resilient in the face of challenging times. Love y'all mean it. Y'all gonna be great, man. Have an awesome day. Wild Out Wednesday. Y'all know what it is. Love y'all. See y'all tomorrow. Look at me.